Hello and welcome back to wireless communication lecture series. In this lecture, you are going to learn about basic introduction to code division multiple access that is CDMA. In the previous two lectures, we have discussed about FDMA and the TDMA. In FDMA, we have seen that each mobile user is using a separate frequency to communicate with the base station. And in the TDMA, we have seen that each user is using a different time slot to communicate with the base station. But here in the CDMA, all the users are going to use same frequency and they are also going to transmit simultaneously. That means at the same time slot. So how that is going to be possible? As you can see over here, we have a user 1, 2 up to n and they are using this time for all the times right and they are using this frequency also so all the users have the same set of frequencies user 1 has a same set as user 2 and up to user n but here in the CDMA they all will be differentiated with the help of the code so each and every user will have some unique code that will allow a base station to differentiate among the user. So this is a basic definition of uh, CDMA in which the user will use the same time and frequency but different code. But if user is using the same time and frequency then it may introduce the interference because the same frequency that means that it will be a co-cell and co-cell can introduce a co-channel interference. So now let's see how with the help of some code we can divide the user into different group right. So in CDMA narrow band message signal is multiplied by a very large bandwidth signal called a spreading signal. So basically in CDMA a narrow band message signal will be spreaded with the help of spreading process and it will use a pseudo noise code sequence which will be random in the nature and we also maintain that a cheap rate should be a very much greater than the data rate. Now this pseudo random code word has some speciality. The first thing is it will be separate for each user that means it will be a unique for each user so that user can be identified easily and another thing is it will be approximately orthogonal to each other orthogonal means 90 degrees separated from each other. So for the detection receiver perform the time correlation to know the desired code word and so if there is a autocorrelation that means that signal is detected otherwise all other code or all other signals will be appeared as a noise due to decorrelation. So this is how with the help of the code user will be identified by the base station in the CDMA. Now let's see some of the features of the CDMA. So first feature is many users share the same frequency. So you know we can use our resources very efficiently we can say in the CDMA because we are using the same set of frequency. Another thing is channel data rate is really high in the CDMA and Therefore, we will require a rake receiver kind of thing that will compensate the delay generated due to the multipass signals and it will improve the performance of the system. Another feature of CDM is there is no absolute limit for the number of users. You know in, in TDMA or in the FDMA, we are limited by the number of frequency or the time but here we don't have such a limit. However, if number of users increases, the system performance gradually decrease for the, all the users because user may not have the same kind of orthogonal signals and that may degrade the performance. However, system performance is improved as user decrease. In CDMA, all the cells will be co-channel cells that means the all cell have a same set of frequency we can say that there is a reuse ratio of 1. CDMA uses a macroscopic spatial diversity 
to provide a soft handoff that means in the soft handoff we have a make before break concept in which the user or mobile station will first make a connection with another base station and then handover will happen and then it will break a connection with the current base station and there are some issues are also there self jamming problem can occur we will see this in next slides and there can be a near far problem also so now let us see what is near far problem in the cdma so this occurs when a many mobile users share the same channel so here you can see that we have one base station and there are few users which are around this base station so in general what happened that the user which is nearer to base station will receive a strong signal and user which is far away from the base station let's say at the cell boundary will receive a weak signal due to the multipath and the losses so now what happened that if this near user will set a noise level for the base station then it will set a noise level according to the signal it received and it will set a noise level as a very low but for the case of this far user the actual noise is very high so in this case if any strong signal receiver user is set a noise floor for this particular base station then the far user is not going to receive such a signal that will be transmitted by the base station and this problem is called as a near far problem so in order to solve this problem we required a power control in the cdm so with the help of the power control method we can solve the near far problem the power control can be open loop or the closed loop but here we will just see the overview of it that in the power control as the mobile station will receive some signal from the base station it will provide a feedback or let's say it will provide a radio signal strength indicator level to the base station that i have received this much of power and i want to increment the power so now next time the base station will increment the power and again the mobile station will check that whether it is receiving the correct power or not and that's how the power will be adjusted between the all the users and the all the users within the cell can receive the signal so this is basically a power control another problem in the cdm is the self jamming and there are couple of reasons for it the first is if all users are not synchronized the chip boundary does not match and so the spreading sequence are not orthogonal and this is the main reason that self jamming can occur because due to that there is some level of cross correlation so due to this cross correlations the each user will block another and that's how the jamming will occur so this is all about the basic introduction to cdmo thank you so much for watching this video